You're listening to Living in Spain Podcasts with David Wright. Hi guys, my name's David Wright and welcome to another one of my podcast shows. Today I'm going to be talking about how to learn Spanish. What is the best ways for you? Because we all learn differently. So here in this podcast, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of how you can learn Spanish and what I did when I first came here and how I learned Spanish and things that I think work really well. Okay, so learning Spanish is probably the most important thing you can do when you're moving to Spain. Even before you move to Spain, when you first think you're about to move to Spain or you've got that as a dream in the future, start learning Spanish now because it is the number one thing that will help you here in Spain. It will save you money, time and stress and I promise you it will make a big difference to you moving here in Spain. Now, What are the best ways to learn Spanish? Everybody learns differently. We all learn at different rates of speed. And we all learn better with books or with videos or, or in lessons. So for me personally, I could never get on with the lessons. And I did have lessons when I first came here to Spain. And for the first year, I wasn't really practicing much. I was working with people that spoke Spanish, so I didn't really have to. So I was pretty lazy. But then when I went self-employed, it was a case of having to and having to fast. So I started going to lessons And I went to a class in town where I was and I paid to go in a small group, about eight, nine people. And about twice a week, we had lessons. And right from the start, I knew it wasn't right for me. I knew it would take years and it just wasn't going to work for me. We were learning the verbs. Now, the verbs in Spain are really hard and I still haven't mastered them by a long way. But when you start here in Spain, the verbs like, for example, to eat, comais, comemos, comer, comen, past, present, future, masculine, feminine. To me, I just want to learn the word to eat. That was enough, you know. So in the classes, it's very difficult. You've got to do it properly. And, and I, I understand that classes are great. That's the, the right way to learn. But for me, it just wasn't right. And it would have taken years for me to get some basic knowledge and learning some basic phrases, which were going to help me. So this is what I did. I went to my instructor, my teacher, and I said to him, look, you know, I want to have private lessons. And I booked in two lessons a week with him. And he said, that's great. So we sat down to the lesson and he started to teach me privately at first his way. And I said, look, I'm sorry, but this isn't going to work for me. How long will it take before I can start speaking Spanish? And he said, well, a couple of years, you know, and I went, no, two years, no good. I need to speak Spanish next week. And he looked at me and laughed and he said, next week? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. I'm a self-employed carpenter here. I've got to go out next week. I've got to buy materials. I've got to buy screws and wood and nails and stuff like that. I need to speak Spanish next week. And he said, he shook his shoulders and he said, I I can't help you. I don't don't know what to say. You know, what, what can I say? And I said, listen, I've got a good idea. When I was a kid in, in the UK and I was learning in primary school, we used to learn French and it was very basic. And what we used to do is to make paper mache plates of food and drink and stuff like that. And we used to do role play and we used to act out with the teacher. You know, you're in a cafe bar and you come in and you order a beer and a wine and a cheese sandwich and things like that. And it was all a bit of a, a, a laugh and a joke and nothing was written down or anything like that. We just learnt basically by doing it, actually doing it and watching others and remembering. So I said to him, that's what I do. I do role play. And he looked at me and he still looked confused and wasn't sure what I meant. So I said, listen, imagine you're the owner of a shop. You're the owner of a wood shop. And I come in and we start off and I say, hello. And you say, hello, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. How are you? And what can I do for you? And things like that. And then I'll ask you for wood. And you say to me, how big, how thick, how long, what kind of wood, what color of wood. And these terms that I'm going to be using to buy wood. So that's what we did. And then we progressed from there. And and then one day he was the, the owner of a a hardware store and I went in and asked for a hammer and some nails and then I said I'm, I'm looking for this and can you help me with this and what do you recommend all phrases words and, and things that I will use and and remember because I need to remember them because I'm going to be using them on a daily basis 
So that's what we did, and we started off doing that. And at first, it was a bit a bit weird for him, um, but it was great. And, and one day, he was the shop owner of a, a window store because I remember I said I want to do the windows for a couple of weeks now because I've got a job coming up next month where I've got to go and buy some new windows, do a renovation of a property. So he said, "Okay." So we went through all the process of what kind of glass do you want and what kind of windows, plastic, aluminium, how big, how wide, are you going to deliver them, do you want to pick them up, all these words and phrases and they were, I was writing stuff down as well and it really did help, I was to go home and sort of remember the role play shop, I could take it through my mind what we'd done that day, for example when it was a, a double glazing shop I'd go in and say hello, get the usuals out of the way, that became easy after a few lessons and then he'd be asking me what I want, so I was getting used to the, the questions that I was going to be asked when I said I want some windows, so you know, what colour, how big, how wide, how, how high, how thick glass, what kind of glass, you know, what kind of openers with locks, with handles, there's thousands of questions but all related to that topic and I could use some of those in my daily vocabulary as well so that's what I did the first six months I was here I had these private lessons they were a bit expensive but I think they were more targeted personally for me and I got so much more out of them didn't do any writing down or anything like that he did occasionally write words on the blackboard so that I could see what what it looked like, you know, so these words words and that he was saying it sounded a bit tricky and how you pronounce them correctly. And it really did help me. I went out, I remember I went to a, a big builder's merchant, a timber merchant, and I, I went in and as a, an old guy there, he'd been there for years by the look of it, and he didn't want to speak to a foreigner. He didn't want to try and under, understand me. If I didn't speak to him in his language exactly how he was used to it, he wasn't going to help me. And it was very difficult the first couple of times I went to see him. So one day I went back to my teacher and I said, I've got this guy, I need to buy wood from him. He's a real pain in the what's it, you know, but can I have some sort of icebreaker to break the ice with him? And my teacher looked at me, and although he spoke very good English and everything, he didn't understand the phrase icebreaker. He thought um, I was going to break him with some over the head with an ice pick or something. So he said, I explained to him what an icebreaker was, and he said, oh, I understand. So he said, tell him this when you go in, soy giri no tonto, puedo ayudarme, por favor, which basically means I'm a foreigner, I'm not stupid, can you help me, please? So... And he also told me that, you know, just tap him on the shoulder gently and just be friendly about it. So that's what I did. I, I went in, I was a bit embarrassed and I walked up to the guy. I saw him there one day and he sort of looked at me, sort of half smiled, think, thinking, here he comes again. What's he want this time? So I went up to the guy, tapped him on the shoulder and I spoke the phrase to him. And he turned around and looked at me and a little chuckle come across his face. And then looked at a bit of paper out of my hand and said, what do you want, sort of thing in Spanish. And off we went. After that, every time I went in there, I sort of jumped the queue. There's other people waiting. He used to come over to me. He used to look for me and, and help me out. And then he'd start saying words. And I'd say to him, you know, what is the word for this? How would you say that in Spanish? And he would tell me. And we became quite friendly. And even to this day, when I go in the store now, which I do fairly regularly, building my house here in Spain, um, I get preferential treatment over other people, all because I, I made the effort. And now he's sort of like, he's my mate in the shop, you know? And a couple of times he's loaded the trailer up for me. He's thrown a few bits of wood in there, which I think he shouldn't have done, but uh, thanks very much. So yeah, that's that's one way of doing it. Now the other way, really, which is quite good, is when you're in Spain, or even in anywhere where you are, you watch a film, and you can always got the options to change the film over to the Spanish language and put it in English subtitles, or vice versa. So you're either reading the, the Spanish to see what it looks like. It's better, I find, to put the film in Spanish so you're hearing it, and then read the subtitles below sort of catch up with the, the plot, so to speak. So that's a good way. The other thing is have the radio on in the car, in the house, all the time. Saturate your brain with the Spanish language. So you've got it on all the time. Listen to a radio station that's got news on it. So every 20 minutes or so you're listening to the news and you can get a gist of what's going on by the news and the caster. And you get used to these programs and the voice of the presenters and you do really learn fast that way. And it's sort of in the background, but it's there. It goes in your brain, so you remember it. 
Now, another way is the apps. There's loads of free apps on the internet. You can get them from just about everywhere. Download them on your PC, on your phone, or even on your TV now. But what I used to do is I used to look for the kiddies ones, the learning a language, learning Spanish language apps. And I used to look for the kiddies games and get the very, very basic ones and just play the games. Like you're going to the, the supermarket and you're buying apples and oranges and all the basic stuff, the first words. And then brothers and sisters, aren't and on calls and then learning to tell the time and days of the week and then numbers and learning to count when i first started i was lucky if i could count to 10 or 20 and then when you start getting in the hundreds and thousands you know you think okay that's fine i can move on now and you buy the next app or even download the next app for free until you get bored of it and move on i did buy a couple of the apps but what i recommend is going through the cheap the cheapest apps, lots of them are pretty good, but when you get a rubbish one, just delete it and download another one. They're free. And then when you find one you really like, see if it's got some good upgrades and pay for the upgrade. Some of these upgrades are only 199, two euros and well worth doing. And again, this is something you can have on in your earpiece, in the gym, when you're in the bath, just about anywhere. Just so you're listening to it and playing it and it's going in your head all the time if you go to classes in the uk you go for a lesson for an hour and you come out and you don't go back for another week so you really lose it it takes a long long time for it to start to sink in that way unless you're practicing and practicing even if you're in spain and you say oh i'm going to learn i'll pick it up quickly when i'm here loads of people say that to me i'm going to pick it up you know i won't be have a problem and you know the only people that pick it up really fast here i've found are the russians don't ask me why whether they're good at languages better than us british people or what but the russians seem to pick it up in a few months and they speak fluently but for us brits we're a bit lazy i feel or at least i was and it's harder to get in in your brain and it's definitely harder as you get older so you know we need all the help we can so these apps are a great way to do it and then lastly join some clubs now when I say clubs, I joined a, a walking club when I was here. I joined a, a rock climbing club and then a mountain climbing club and then eventually a salsa dancing club. Now, you've got to find something in your area that you like, whatever it is, whether it's sitting down doing some needlework or, or reading club or something, anything. But somewhere in a Spanish club, not English, try and pick a club that's got next to no English in it at all and, and then just jump in at the deep end start talking to these people and it will be really hard when you first start i know it was for me when i went to the walking club i didn't know anybody there they met once a week on a sunday and we used to go out in the hills walking around different areas for about three hours there was about i think there was about 20 of us at the end when when i when i left the, the place and um we used to i used to catch up with people walk with somebody talk with them you know say hello practice my basic spanish with them and people are interested to find out who you are where you're from and that and they do help you nobody criticizes you or makes fun of your spanish they really do help you so clubs are a great way and and later on i made some great friends at my clubs both walking club and the rock climbing club and then when i started doing doing the salsa dancing which was way out of my field there was nothing I wanted to do in my life less than go salsa dancing but I was p pushed into it with some Spanish friends that took me along absolutely loved the music learned learned to dance made a right fool of myself at the beginning but after a few months of dancing three times a week absolutely loved it and that is eventually how I met my Spanish wife so you know you never know what happens guys unless you push yourself so I hope these tips have helped you there's several different ways I've mentioned here that you can learn Spanish. Tell me in the comments box how you're learning and, and if any of these have helped, please leave a nice comment and uh, thanks for listening. If you have enjoyed this podcast by David Wright, then you will love his new books. Out now on Amazon and Kindle, packed with money-saving tips and information on living and working in Spain. Just go to livinginspainbooks.com. David also has a popular blog for expats in Spain. Come and take a look now at britishexpatsinspain.com. <laughs>